You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets Exposed, Episode 16, Sonnet 15. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say I'm not just another enough. one in your place? You're, You're the pretender. pretender. What, what if I say I will never, never surrender? It has just occurred to me that the second quatrain of Sonnet 14 mentions minutes in context of astronomy relating to Sonnet 60's waves and established nautical theme, and suggesting that what Shakespeare is doing is attempting to navigate the seas of time by the stars, or reflected eyes, of the reader. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for their contributions, and, as importantly, for showing faith in a project I've been obsessed with and possessed by for years. If you haven't already, then please sign up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking. Every dollar breeds a page that brings us closer to a beautiful graphic novel that will make the sonnets so much more accessible. And of course, ten times that dollar will bring you the finished product ten times faster. Right, let's analyze Sonnet 15. When I consider everything that grows, holds in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth naught but shows, whereon the stars in secret influence comment. Consider is a heavily loaded term. Its modern meaning has been in use since the 14th century, but included a suggestion of to observe the stars from Latin, and from the 1530s to regard in a particular light. In combination with the stars of line 4, we see that this opening verse continues the astrology-astronomy metaphor from the previous sonnet. Just like living things capture perfection for just a tiny moment in time, the sonnets capture only a tiny moment of Shakespeare's perfection. The world is a stage, certainly, but so is the sonnet sequence, and the shows are presented by the sonnets to the reader whose comment, a word strongly linked to the word consider, are as inaccessible to the sonnets as the original thoughts of their author. Additionally, each meeting of the sonnets with the reader is a secret from Shakespeare, where secret meant concealed and apart, as is the bard's influence on the reader through his words. As I've mentioned before, Shakespeare is using his sonnets to possess the reader for the duration of the spell, influencing them to speak his words out loud in order to keep them, and thereby himself, alive. When I perceive that men as plants increase, Cheered and checked even by the self-same sky, Vaunt in their youthful sap at height decrease, And wear their brave state out of memory. Men and plants are here described as being equal under the sun, And plants, or leaves, as we've seen in earlier sonnets, Appear to be metaphors for the pages containing the sonnets. Their youthful sap is the ink that pours from Shakespeare's veins, And each sonnet's reading is a sonnet's day, When the eyes reach the middle of the page, they begin to descend towards the end, and once the reader reaches the end and begins the next one, the previous one is worn out of memory. Then the conceit of this inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to sullied night. Conceit meant both a thought, notion, something formed in the mind, and would already have suggested vanity which plays into the overarching theme of Narcissus and Echo. Stay has a few meanings, one of which recalls the nautical adventure theme, and one which means a piece of wood used as a support, which neatly falls into the previous quatrain's plant theme. Spoken from the sonnet to Shakespeare, the sonnet sequence makes the author rich in youth before my sight, meaning both in the sonnet's eyes and as a precursor to the sonnet being read by the reader, while time, who is Cronos or the Grim Reaper, battles with decay to see who will take Shakespeare's beauty first. Spoken from Shakespeare to the sonnet, Shakespeare sees the sonnet as rich in his own youth, while time and decay threaten to destroy the sequence as it navigates through the dark oceans of eternity. And all in war with time for love of you, as he takes from you, I engraft you new. The closing couplet of Sonnet 15 elegantly brings the sonnet's conceits together. All refers to all the sonnets of the sequence, as well as to all of Shakespeare's wasteful efforts to write them. 
Shakespeare grafts a new sonnet to the sequence even as he completes the previous one, while the sonnets graft youth to the bard's memory even as time strips it away from him. While the sonnets have been recognized and adored by scholars and fans the world over, they haven't enjoyed the same kind of mass appeal as his plays, and Shakespeare's intention for his works was always to appeal to a broad cross-section of society. It is my aim to rescue the sonnets from obscurity, from the darkness, and to that end I am producing a graphic novel adaptation, recording these podcasts, and tattooing 154 images representing the sonnets onto my body. Once again, I need your help to make this happen. Please consider signing up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking. Keep up with the graphic novel at sonnetcomics.com and join our community discussions on Reddit at slash r slash sonnetcomics with an X. Thanks for listening. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What if I say I'm not just another no. one in your, your place? place? You're the pretender, what if I say I will never surrender?